Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at changing out a graphics card. Now I have here a, a Z420 workstation from HP and basically uh, it has originally had a four core eight thread uh, Xeon processor in it. I swapped that out. That's a, the 2011 socket and I swapped it out for a uh, a 12 core 24 thread version which was a low power like 115 watts and this was some time ago this is a pretty old system by the way this probably dates to 2014 i picked it up in 2017 i want to say for around 450 bucks or something like that but it was uh it was pretty much stripped it just had the cpu i think it had eight gigabytes of ram uh, i updated it to 32 and like I said, I put in a better processor and I actually just ordered a new microprocessor that's even faster. Uh, it doesn't have as many threads. It's only an eight core, but it goes up to uh, four gigahertz speed. So for single thread performance, it's, it was about 30% faster. And there's a balance that you could do. And I'm going to show that to you in a little chart, how you could figure out uh, where you get the most bang for the buck. So essentially you could have multiple cores and maybe get a higher multi-core benchmark, or you could have a nice balanced where you have the single thread benchmark, the highest you can get it, as well as the number of cores where it balances out. And in fact, actually, that's what it does. Okay, so what we have, um, I am going to swap this out with the current graphics card that's in there with this one, which I picked up off of eBay. It is a Quadro. 5200 uh, K5200 and it's a very large card I believe the TDP or the uh, the wattage on it is around 150 watts or so uh, so make sure if you get something like this that you have the adequate power supply the power supply in here I believe is going to be adequate so it should be okay and so with that uh, just to show you there are other alternative graphics cards you could get too and here are some of them. Uh, this is actually Quadro uh, K620. And you can actually see that on the top there from NVIDIA. Now the other, and look at the, the difference. This is a small form factor. See, it actually has a, a low profile or an LP bracket. Okay. You also have to make sure that you have the proper cabling for these, too, because sometimes you'll see DP, uh, as well as this is the older, I forget the name of it, I can't think of it off the hand. But uh, anyhow, this one has a benchmark rating, uh, if you search up benchmarks, of about 2,500, uh, whereas the Quadro here is almost 6,000 on the benchmark. Uh, this is a Fire Pro. W2100, again, a very old card. I picked it up for like 19 bucks. Uh, the Quadro, I, I picked up for about 25. Now, if you're looking, if you're running SolidWorks, you might actually want one of these simply because you have the ability to see the real view graphics without modifying your configuration system. And now, there are videos on show you how to do it, and some say it's, they're successful with it. I've tinkered with it since, gosh, the early 2000s. And uh, when it comes to software modification of like a GeForce card to a professional graphics card, it, it, sometimes I've just run into issues. So uh, that being said, I almost recommend uh, if you're really serious about going into this, you might want to get one of these. But this is a very slow card. This is only, I believe, like a thousand uh, on the benchmark. Now, if you're talking miles per hour, that, that's kind of like how you compare it, like a thousand. It only has two gigabytes of RAM, by the way, too. Uh, this one has two gigabytes of RAM, and again, that's 2,500, so it's almost, it's past twice the speed of the other card. The Quadro is like 5,900, uh, that was the benchmark, so much faster, than, I should say the Quadro uh, K5200. This card also was about, uh, retail price was about 2,500 back in 2014, whereas these, uh, these are more budget-minded cards. And so they're, they were more like in the $100, $200 range. Actually, more of the $200 range is about the, what you'd find them at initially. But anyhow, so 
we're going to go ahead and swap it out. Now, what I have in here is actually an AMD Fire Pro. And, um, if you're wondering, like, what car is better, I don't want to say which car is better. They're, they're both very, very, they're excellent cards. Uh, AMD, of course, you know, makes the Radeon. Now they make the Radeon Pro, which is, has replaced the Fire Pro version, which is this, and the, the WX series. And I have a thir uh, WX3100 in here right now. It has four gigabytes of RAM. And so, uh, and it's also a small form factor like you have here. All right, so let's begin. Oh, another thing, when you're talking about wattage, uh, when you have the your computer, like something like this, this workstation actually probably has a power supply about 600, 650 maybe. And I think that's going to be adequate to run this uh, Quadro card that I have. But when you get a small computer, and I'll make another video of one of the small form factor computers, they don't have the high power power supply. So these are much more efficient. Like this Fire Pro W2100 is, if I recall, maybe one of the more efficient ones that runs at, uh, I'd have to double check, but I think it's like 25 watts or something like that. Whereas this card is more in the, if I recall correctly, it might be like 40 watts or 45. And you could look these up, by the way. And then, like I said, this is maybe 130 to 150 watts. And some of them go as high as 225 maybe even 250 if you get the, the crazy one. Now this has eight gigabytes of RAM. Let's begin. Now it's always good when you open up your computer. Notice I always stayed on top of this metal casing while I touched those. You wanna make sure static is an issue to get one of these, uh, if you can, it's an anti-static wrist strap because I've actually blown out a card. I had an AMD card one time, very expensive one, and I was swapping it out, walked over the carpet, and I felt a little pop. Sometimes you don't even feel it, but a um, little static shock, especially in winter in the Midwest here, very dry. It's a good idea to get this. Now, the other alternative that some say you could actually always hold on to the metal casing, and that will discharge any static. So uh, that's what I'm going to try and do here. But this is actually what I would recommend, getting something like that. Sometimes they come with motherboards when you purchase them. You could reuse them. Okay, and also get a... Uh, Screwdriver, that's Phillips head usually, small Phillips head. I have a whole variety here that's going to help you out. Now, I'm going to put my graphics card on, uh, all these cards are actually on anti-static bags while I'm working on them. And here's, you've all seen these like Mylar or whatever they are, static sensitive bags. So I'm going to lay those out, move these apart. Now, the nice thing about the Hewlett Packard cases. This one actually I found on eBay now. It's going for about um, uh, $200, and that was with 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now that's DDR3, and that's a significant amount of RAM. You could upgrade it even beyond that. But DDR3 is pretty expensive right now, and for 200 bucks to get a whole system is not too shabby, and then you could update the microprocessor. Now, when I price it out, I could actually get a new microprocessor that's almost just as fast with a DDR4 and that. Uh, so it might not be really viable to do this update unless you have this stuff laying around. Now, with the HP systems, it's really easy. I just pull on this lever and I pull up. But a lot of them have screws that you have to unscrew. I'm just going to pull up like that. Pull the casing off. The nice thing about HP, again, they give you like a little schematic of what's on there and IOs and things like that. I'm just going to set that over here. Now, if you look here, let's get that in the camera, you'll see here's the microprocessor underneath here. There's a fan. Uh, I'm sorry, it's right here. Uh, this is actually a fan that assists with cooling the, the chips, the actual memory. And I have eight banks of memory here. You can see the Radeon Pro WX3100, 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's just under, I want to say it's 272800 is the um, benchmark for that. So it is faster than the two small form factor cards I showed you. And this dates to 2017. So whereas the Quadro I'm replacing it with is actually older, but it's still a valid card. What you might want to be careful of, though, is I found some of my older cards no longer work with Windows 10 as the driver support ended. These are pretty well supported for, for a while, but just always double check on that. If you get something too old, like I was also, I was nervous about getting this Quadro simply because I wasn't sure how much longer the drivers were going to be supported. And without driver support, there's no point. 
Okay, uh, it, I also put in here a SSD, uh, which originally came with a 500 megabyte, 7200 RPM drive, uh, which are pretty slow to these to, this, to today's standards. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. Now, again, with HP, the way they develop these, they have little green brackets that um, they're plastic, and you just have to pull them down. And it actually, I don't know if you can see that, let's see. Uh, I actually pushed them down and it pulls out and it releases the card. Now there's no screws in here, but um, when you do pull it out, on mine you can see a green tab right here. You want to make sure you pull that green tab out so that it pulls in the general direction. And notice I'm holding on to the case while I do this. And here is that Radeon Pro, excellent graphics card by the way. Um, so uh, I actually got it from uh, AMD themselves, and I've had it for several years. Wonderful card. Okay, um, so anyhow, now we're going to put in the Quadro. And before I do that, again, you want to make sure you have a power supply. And this power supply that came with the system actually has a six-pin plug ready. So because it's a workstation, you probably could have even ordered this card back in the day with this workstation. And that would have probably put this workstation in a roundabouts with the configuration that I have currently with the 12-core processor. Probably would have been around seven to ten thousand dollars back in that time. And now you want to make sure it matches up. And let's see if I get one. Of them. There we go. Push it in until it clips down. All right. And there it is, it looks secure. Put in the six pin plug. Some of the higher wattage ones like the, uh, the NVIDIA Quadro K6000, which is actually predecessor to this, is actually even more powerful. That runs in the 8000 uh, spectrum as far as benchmark. And that one, requ I think it's 225 watts and you might need an additional pin, which I don't believe this power supply has, you'd have to get a new power supply. And power supplies could run you about $100, $200, depending upon the quality of them. You could even find them cheaper sometimes on the internet. But uh, you, you want a good quality one, you don't want to burn it out on you. Okay, now also, just to show you here, this has the original, that's the drive that it came with it. Oh, it's one terabyte actually. And um, it's a little dusty there, I've had this for a while. And then these just slide back in. And here you can see the solid state drive I replaced it with, which is a half terabyte. And these run a uh, half terabyte or uh, 500 megahertz or 480, whatever it is, runs approximately current right now. I think you get it for 50, 60 bucks or something, a good quality one. All right. So if you wanted to replace the memory or update it, you pull these plastic shrouds off. They actually... Um, have little clip mechanisms on them. Uh, let's see here. I'll just show you. Uh, HP really makes nice workstations for modifying or updating. You just pull that shroud off and it exposes the actual chips. You could, uh, these have heat spreaders on them. You just pull these back and then you could pull out the chip. And then this is a four gigabyte DDR3, so it's pretty old stuff, like everything's DDR4 now. But then when you put it in, just make sure the notch matches up, push it down, and it should, you don't want to actually push these on it unless it really isn't pushing in, but if you push it in, those clips should clip themselves. But you can, I have seen where I, a new motherboard where it's been difficult and I've actually pushed them a little bit and helped it along. All right, now it's a good idea to put that shroud back on because that assists with the cooling. That was how it was designed to cool, and it clips right on. Okay, so we've replaced the card. We put the power in, and again, when you look at these cards, you got to make sure you have the proper adapters. This one has uh, display ports, which display ports, let's see if I have an example. 
This is what a display port looks like. It has a little notch. It looks like an HDMI, but they are not compatible. Most of you know that. Display port is more of a professional version. This has six of them, and it pops in just like so. Uh, and then it has a clip that you have to push down if you want to release it. Whereas HDMI will not fit in here. Okay, you can't fit an HDMI. It might look like it. HDMI is not going to work. Now this also does have this, uh, and I always forget the name of this or the number on there, but it's still very wide. Dates back a long time ago, but they're still good. All right, one thing I forgot to do was clip this down. So I'm going to go ahead and clip, push that down. Oh, that was those green clips, sorry. Got out of the camera a little bit. All right, and we're ready to put the cover back on. And so it just going like so, drop it in, and it should just snap together. Now again, if you uh, have screws, sometimes you'll have to screw them in. Like this actually has screw holes, but I leave them out because the clipping mechanism is good enough. All right, and so with that, it's ready to plug in. Now when you do plug it in uh, to your computer, set it all up, it's going to look for the drivers. It'll take a minute sometimes for it to boot up or post on the screen and then you'll see your resolution looks really junky. If you pre-install the drivers, you can do that. I've uh, Sometimes they recommend you pre-install them, sometimes you don't. I, uh, I don't really typically pre-install them. I usually plug it in, and especially with Windows 10 these days, you'll get a lower resolution, but then you could easily find, you just go to nvidia.com, or you go to amd.com, and you could actually just look up drivers and put in the specifications of your card. And that uh, concludes.